coffee a dark brown aromatic beverage prepared from the roasted and ground seeds of a tropical shrub coffea for its numerous benefits millions enjoy the drink every day which makes the coffee beans a high demand seed at every coffee shop restaurant airport hotel and household the cost of one kilogram of roasted coffee beans ranges from between 35,000 shillings and 50,000 shillings today. A busy coffee shop in Kampala brews about 15 kilograms of coffee on average. When you do the math, coffee growing is a lucrative business to invest in, but the frequently asked question is, how do you start? Coming up on Seeds of Gold. It doesn't matter how much land you have. What matters is your dream. And your dream will drive you to where you want to go. Whatever piece of land you have, you can begin with it. Common mistakes which I think most of the farmers do is uh, one, to imagine that you need a lot of money to start. So you wait to collect the money and you never start. It's a rainy season down in Masaka, a period quite favorable for starting farmers who may not be in position to invest in an all-round 356-day irrigation system, especially for coffee, one of the plants that requires a good amount of water to grow. We meet Agri Katama, who has for the past four years practiced the art of taking advantage of the season to kickstart his coffee farming projects. I've been doing coffee for four years. My major harvest uh, is happening now. I have not yet sold the coffee yet. But uh, the biggest harvest since I started growing coffee is this season. Because we started with about one acre. And uh, I can say that right now we've planted about 100 acres. Uh, 50% of this is going into production. The rest is still in, in the initial stages. So we are progressing well. Like all farming projects, any startup requires a number of considerations. Agri takes us through what is required to kickstart your investment. Whatever piece of land you have, you can begin with it. Because after you have uh, got access to land, whether it's an acre or two or three, then the next step is for you to identify what kind of coffee you want to grow. There are two types of planting material. Uh, for us, we are, doing, uh, we are doing Robusta coffee. Robusta coffee can be propagated from two types of seedlings. One is elite. Elite is propagated from seed. The other one is corono. Corono is a cutting. It means that you have a mother garden or you have identified a nursery which has a mother garden where you are going to create your planting material. So uh, first thing is for you to know uh, which land you're going to begin with. If it's an acre, you will know how many plants you need. Uh, an acre takes uh, 450 plants. For example, at a spacing of 10 foot, feet by 10 by 10, you will need about 450 plants. So you will now need to establish the cost per seedling. How much does it take to, to buy a seedling? Um, if your decision is to go for Corona, you know that the seedling will take you between 1,000 to 2,000 shillings. If you're going to plant Elite, that is now the coffee propagated from seed, it will take you between 300 to 500 shillings. Then you establish the cost per acre. Once you've been able to collect the money for that, uh, planning, planning in terms of not wanting to know how much you want to, to do at once, uh, that will help you to establish the kind of resources you need, money, for purchase of seeds, for digging of holes for the coffee, then the other uh, aspect is for you to identify where you are going to get your planting material. Because the planting material is key. You, you don't go along the street wherever you have seen uh, coffee seedlings. 
and just buy. You need to be very sure that the source of your planting material is what is going to give you what you are looking for. There are a lot of uh, uh, coffee nurseries who just produce coffee for the sake. They don't mind about the end user who is the farmer. Um, once you have uh, known where you are going to get the source of your planting material, of course you already established the cost. Then the other challenge is now how to begin. Deep on, 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 on the assumption that you have the resources. Uh, well, how much resources do you have and how much would you be able to do by using those resources? Then you go to land preparation. Yeah. To know the spacing of the coffee, you must have to till the land first. Open the land. Once you have opened it, um, the next step is for you to go in the garden and measure where your holes are, where your holes are going to be. I, I, I did that for the three acres I started with. Uh, one, why you need to do that is for you to, to know how many plants you will need because once you've done the spacing, the spacing for me that I'm using here in my garden is 12 feet. The majority of farmers use 10, 10 feet, 10 twin plant by plant, twin row and corp. But for me, I'm using 12. The reason I do that is uh, I have been able to identify that the bigger the spacing, the more vigorous the plants become. You need to make sure your coffee garden has enough light. It has enough sunshine. When the sun is shining, it penetrates into the garden and gets to every crop. The key learnings here are make enough research on what type of coffee you intend to grow, find the needed resources to start, till the land, create enough spacing for where your plants will grow, and now we are ready to sow the seeds. Mwanyi, wetuwa tugenda jisimba, eno. Tujisimba mahati gechi nye chetuwa simye, chukila chaba de kusatu kusatu. Kati mwanyi, tugenda jisimba in the center of the wall. It will be 1.5 from this side, 1.5 from this side, 1.5, 1.5. Uh, emwanyi endokwa ekole dwo bulunji ebera mukavera wekati baba bajira bidde mu nasare bed kitwano ejjawo nge maze okuleta emirandira abamu aba abalimi bakole ensobi bamuwe mwanyi na ajitwala na kavera nga bwe bakalete deko na ajiteeka mujinya ni mwanyi bategenda kukula beja kusigala Akavira kazi hizi mirandi na jino kufuruma. Tukajia kukano, akabadeka kute mwanyi. So that mirandi na jino, jiso bolo kweta. Ntipo no jisimba mchinya wano wetu gendo jiteka. Wano wetu ti. Tumazo kusimbe mwanyi ya fi. Echitu linyisiza kumwanyi eno saidi ne saidi. Etaka lisobolo okugumira empewo elimwe kuyita mu okukosa mirandira jiri ejiva mu kavera kiberenge gesigadde mu kavera muri mwebadde embera yayo while leaving the right amount of spacing between the plants is important to maximize growth and provide room for the roots and leaves agri also stresses the importance of branching the seedlings to increase the possible number of berries one can get per plant the branch is important because that's where your the, the production is going to take place yeah if you plant a, your garden and you have only one tree going up you have less production than somebody who has planted and has three trees going up because the production comes from, from the trees. If there are too many, you have no production. If there are too few, you will still have less production for the same piece of land. So you need to make sure that you have at least the maximum of three branches per tree. That will increase your yield per tree. Kati eno tere sema tabi tachitegeza nti eno bwekula tugenda kujueta wetu tujueta tujuete facing eno bweti meaning that the branches will come from around this 
near the ground to increase the, the strength. When it becomes heavy, the corn is to be ground. If I get the car, man, I got you one Go below in a condo wait. Orobomaze. Now in Zokubang in condo Zolina, Teziko, hook. You must have taken one year. So you will use a string to do. No tying our no, 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 for many startups, a couple of mistakes are usually a hindrance to a fruitful growth of the venture. Agrimations traps, starting coffee farmers, go through and how to avoid them right after the break. collected what is needed to start your investment and are already starting the planting but what could possibly go wrong common mistakes which i think most of the farmers do is uh, one to imagine that you need a lot of money to start so you wait to collect the money and you never start that's a common mistake uh, the other mistake is in the preparation of land itself um, wanting to have too much on too little, too little land, too little space. You know, you don't do the right spacing. I have seen farmers who are doing a spacing of eight by eight. You will have more trees per acre, but at the end of the day, you will have less yield because these trees are competing. They are competing for nutrients, they are competing for so many other things. When the trees are too many, it will become a bush. The light we've been talking about will not penetrate. Yeah? So that's another common mistake. Uh, another common mistake people, especially coffee farmers, is to imagine that a coffee plant is a bush so that it doesn't need care. In fact, if you want anything from coffee, you need to give it the maximum attention. You need to prune, you need to, you need to remove excess leaves, you need, you need to do a lot of stuff for you to be able to get money from coffee to increase your yield. Unlike plants like vegetables that take a shorter time to mature, ranging between one to six months, the seeds of gold in the coffee plantations require quite a period of about four years to harvest, which can be quite withholding, and it's on this point that Agri mentions aspects that you must put in mind and practice to be able to endure the period. You need to know when you're planting. Do you have rains? If you don't have rains, if you plant your, 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 your coffee tree now, how are you going to manage the drought, for example? We, we cover our coffee when we've planted, especially when we anticipate that it is going to, it's going to the rain is are going to stop. You can cut grass and put it tight into enjoy. You, you Are you going to use this grass to cover on sides of your hole so that the water retention is increased? So even if the sun is too much, your, your, your coffee plant will not be affected. And uh, if you find that uh, probably the sun is prolonged, then you will need to know where you're going to have the source of water. Source of water can be drawn in different ways. For me, I use a pump, but a small farmer can use a bicycle to ferry the water to, to the plant he has put in the garden. Because uh, a coffee seedling will need roughly about, let's say, 10 liters every week. We normally have uh, a dry season for about one month or so. So I think any farmer, any serious person who has, wants to venture into coffee can, can do that. 
should you be unable to have enough money to buy a pump, for example, or have enough money to construct a dam using cement, you can construct a temporary shed where you are going to put a tap reed and draw your water either using a bicycle or using manual labor, carry water from, we carry water from, from streams to go and cook food. Equally, you can carry water to go and water your, 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 your coffee plant in the garden. I pump water into this. It is a, a, an improvised stand made of wood and tap lid. Anybody who doesn't have enough money can use this. To either collect water, either using a bicycle, a motorcycle, but for me, I use a pump which draws water from the swamp down. Every plant in the garden, we need roughly about 10 liters of water. So if we're having an acre of 450 plants, multiply that by 10 liters of water, you will know how much. You, because I said um, the dry season is usually takes about two months. So that are roughly two, eight weeks. After eight weeks, we expect rains to come. You, the challenge of water will have uh, somehow been alleviated. All successful ventures undergo challenges at some stage in their growth, climate change, maintenance, and quality for the right market are some of the challenges coffee growers encounter, as Agri explains. What I have found to be very, very um, challenging in coffee farming is the water shortage. The seasons, the seasons are erratic. You can no longer determine when rains will come. And when coffee does not get enough water, your production will definitely go down. There are seasons when you will not get any production at all because of insufficient rates. That's one. Number two has been uh, the twig, coffee twig borer. This is an insect which enters a, a coffee twig boars it and it starts drying up. When it dries up, we, the, the, fru, the flowers, the fruits all go on the twig. But when this twig dries up, your production is, is not going to take place, not going to happen. So it's a serious challenge. Um, when you progress from one acre to 10 acres, the other challenge is weed control. Weed control, uh, the labor to do that is difficult to get. In some of our locations where we are, it's very hard to get the people who would want to come and, 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 and do the wedding. And even when you get them, they are going to ask you for money which does not justify the rate of return in your enterprise. You know, somebody uh, asks for money as if they are going to, to produce gold as you are producing coffee. Uh, you need to factor that into your costs of production to determine whether what you are doing makes sense. So labor is another big, big challenge. Um, probably the other aspect towards the end is uh, when you are harvesting coffee. You need to harvest only ripe berries for your coffee to make sense in the market. Now, Assuming you have 10 acres, you cannot harvest it yourself. You must have labor to do that for you. And most of the times, these people you bring do not even appreciate the quality, the, 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 the incense of a ripe berry. Because we, what we do, we pay them per kilo they pick. So this person will be more interested in how many kilos he will pick than the quality of the coffee he has picked. So it's also another challenge. Even with such challenges on the road to success, coffee growing does have a unique investment factor for why you should invest in it, just like Agre. Yes, I ventured into coffee having been in other enterprises because I thought coffee was a better store of value than the others. Uh, whereas I can't keep a pig when it is mature for sale. Uh, I can't... Um, keep a chicken, an egg, for example, for more than a month when it is ready for sale. 
I can keep coffee for even two years and nothing will have happened to it. So as a, a measure of social of security, I thought coffee is a, a better enterprise to mix with these others. Uh, secondly, the other enterprises I was doing, I found they could feed coffee very well because what I use in, in the coffee shamba is gotten from pigs, as pig manure, chicken manure. I may not even need to go to the market to buy um, artificial fertilizers. Then number three is, the, uh, apart from the social security I talked about, I think I don't have to sleep in a coffee garden. No, it gives me more freedom. Even when my resources are not enough at a particular time, I can, I can, I can still come back to the coffee garden when it has gone bad and I reinstate it without much hassle. And um, the little experience I have uh, gotten in coffee farming, I think the prices are also okay. Yeah, they are very okay. It is something anyone can do at whatever scale and they are still able to earn a living. The reason probably why I jump so much from the coffee enterprise is that I've been farming for 15 years, but coffee is only four years. So, so, so my farming journey started in 2013 when I bought my three acres of land. And I started with poultry, 300 chicken. The 300 chicken had turned into about 2,000 within three years. Uh, I added onto another enterprise, which was the piggery. I actually started with one pig in, 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 in a, a, an improvised shed. Uh, right now, I'm talking about 300 chicken. I mean 300 pigs. The chicken, I'm talking about 15,000 chicken. Along the way in my uh, animal farming. I could see people coming for manure and I got interested to know where they were taking the manure. And out of 10 people, seven would tell me they are going to put it in their coffee shamba. And I got intrigued to know why, why this was the case. So I said, let me try it. Let me try the coffee farming. I started with four acres which is about, it was in about 2014, yeah. Actually, it was eight, it was eight acres, 2014. And the, the progress has been gradual. From eight acres, I'm now talking about 120 acres. And I'm still going. For now, I, I want to first work on the value, value chain, before I do further expansion. Uh, eight acres was probably, um, we can talk about maybe 4,000 trees. I'm now talking about 40,000, that's about 10 times. I, I may not talk about the money because I haven't seen it. I'm still investing in it. Yeah, but I'm very confident that this money will come. You too can make it today if you only start. Next week on Seeds of Gold, Agri teaches us how to maintain the coffee garden.